honored to represent the police administration and also the National Election Security Task Force to present a position of the Ghana Police Service and the National Election Security Task Force on the topic. Um, the topic is simple, as we all know. Then um, we just needed to do some background, looking at issues regarding uh, roles and responsibilities. We understand and we know the functions of the Ghana Police Service, issues of protection of life and property, prevention and detection of crime, going into maintenance of law and order. And it is within that framework that security for election is executed. Again, when it comes to elections in Ghana, we know that the Ghana Police Service and the security agencies have been doing this job since the conduct of elections started in Ghana. So far, it is important to make it clear here that elections security provision in Ghana has so far been successful up to 2016. We've done this job very well peacefully to 2016 without any hindrance, notwithstanding some of the issues that have been uh, talked about here. Therefore, the security agencies, Ghana Police Service mandated to support the Electoral Commission of Ghana to actually do their job. And to be able to do that, there are various platforms that support the work of the security agencies and the National Election Security Task Force. We'll go into that. And the philosophy of security provision here is security before, during, and after. This has been presented in some other ways by my colleagues who did earlier presentations. At the same time, we need to understand that because of numbers of the Ghana Police Service, let's go back to 2016. We looked at, we had about 29,000 police stations. By the time we did the referendum in December, we have moved to 31,800 and something police stations. For 2020 elections, we're going to manage 33,367 police stations. And by law, every police station needs to have security personnel. And by the definition of the presentations done in terms of flash white horse sports, deployments are done based on what? Threats. And therefore, those areas that are seen as flashpoint or horse base, where you don't deploy one person, you need to increase the number based upon what? So you can imagine the number of street personnel that are deployed to only polling stations. Then we come to talk about collation centers. Then you move from collation centers into the issues of rapid response teams, so you can imagine. So for that reason, Ghana Police Service alone cannot do it, and that is why the security agencies are doing it together. So, which security agencies are doing this job? So, overall, within mobilization is done within the National Election Security Task Force, one chain of command. So, for elections, as was described earlier, no chain of command or no agency or authority can deploy for elections without passing it through the National Security, uh, National Election Security Task Force. Anything outside that is illegal and unwarranted and will not be countenanced. So, therefore, you look at issues like the security services that provide this particular service. The Ghana Police Service, Ghana, Ghana National Fire Service, Ghana Prison Service, Immigration Customs Division. Then, again, these are deployments to police stations and collation centers. Then when it comes to rapid response teams, the Ghana Police Service and the Ghana Forces on standby. That is how it's done. Any other authority or any other group that deploys outside this is illegal. Okay, at the same time, this particular um, organogram is important because we are looking at Ghana as a whole. And therefore, let's look at Act 526, 1996, the Security and Intelligence Agencies Act. That is where we have 
the national security architecture of Ghana. So you look at this, when we go, we'll discuss that and relate it to the election security architecture. So on this basis, uh, I've done my introduction. My aim today is to actually give you an overview of the national election security architecture and also contribute to the roles of the Ghana Police Service in actually discussing the topic, the violence in elections and the way forward for the 2020 elections. And to achieve my objectives, I will take you through the backgrounds and then go through some of the issues that have been talked about, going to look at the national election security architecture, uh, our planning process, the voter registration that have been discussed here, then of course some extract of violence incidents, then police actions and responses, legal framework, and then the way forward as have been proposed by everybody here. When we look at the national election security architecture, we are looking at it from the headquarters, regions, and district or constituencies. So the National Election Security Task Force, chaired by the Inspector General of Police, all the heads of the security agencies are members. Then within this, we have subcommittees that are representation from the various command levels who work for our chair and the leadership. The same thing applies to the regions and it applies to the district also. Then at the same time, when it comes to the security agencies, what is the composition? We're looking at representation from all the security institutions as have been defined, electoral commission, then national commission for civic education. Others will be discussed appropriately. Then we look at what is the objectives. We also need to understand the idea of this is about impartiality, neutrality, and the ability for the National Election Security Task Force to be able to work independently. That is it. And all in support of the Electoral Commission of Ghana. So when we go forward, we begin to understand that it's about insulating the security agencies from all forms of interferences in the course of policing elections in the country. This has been the system and the practice. Then independent of the regional security committees and at the same time independent of the district security committees. And above all, the election security task forces are not subcommittees of either the RESEC or the DISEC or the MUSEC. That is why the structure of the Ghana National Security Architecture, as I showed in my introduction, is very, very important for you to understand this. There are some takeaways. If you look at, there have been debates and argument about the context, the nature of the security and Intelligence Agencies Act in terms of some issues that need to be addressed. Therefore, for this forum and for us, we need to look at this so that it can inform decision making if we want to achieve and revise certain things that will be helpful to us. Therefore, there are certain questions that we leave because as a security agencies, we act. But it is important for you to understand this. Can't the national election security uh, this is architecture operate independently of the national security architecture. This is food for thought that the think tanks like CDD and others must explore and see how they can champion this course. Can it be absolutely independent of the national security structure? Then the last but not the least, can the chairs of RISEC or DISEC or MUSEC 
stay completely out of all issues concerning election security. But I can assure you that notwithstanding these questions, the National Election Security Task Forces have worked independently over the years. Then planning for 2020 elections. Um, we need to understand that security, we don't wait for issues to come before we plan. Planning for 2020 elections have started long ago. I can even say that immediately after the conclusion of 2016 election. But critical and a lot of effort was done in 2019 to build up speed, capacity, and every day uh, this to be able to support 2020. Therefore, since 2019, we use, we will say, mock examination exercises. You remember the 2019 referendum, district level elections, and at the same time, um, three elections, unit committee elections, district level elections, and then referendum. Although the referendum was not what, uh, executed, but the security agencies plan on that. And therefore, 17th October 2019, the security agencies inaugurated the National Election Security Task Force, replicated that across the regions and the district, and they have been working towards this year since then. You may not be able to see this one well, but the colors will tell you. If you see red, you know the meaning. Hotspots and all that have been done. And as we proceed towards the main election, some of these issues will still come back into what discussions. But it is also important for us to understand that we also planned for the voter registration exercise that has just completed in clusters, as you are aware. Then, similarly, we've planned for the additional polling stations that send us from 29,000 in 2016 and also is, has moved to 31,846 in 2019, and it's now going to 33,367. We've planned on that, as I've uh, uh, discussed with you. Our model of deployment, not all, at least basic. Whether it is voter registration, it is election, we should know that we do a lot of things. We cannot actually listen, but Basically, you know about static deployment, registration centers like we did in the election, uh, this is the voter rates, polling stations, collation centers, mobile patrols, then of course, rapid response teams. Uh, we take the meaning in the way they are presented, but when we deploy, the meaning will be defined. <laughs> then also, the voter registration, now comes into the issues that have been discussed properly. Um, uh, anybody who had the opportunity to have listened to our presentation, some of our discussions before the voter registration exercise, the National Election Security Task Force has deep analysis of the voter registration exercise and the main elections. And there are issues that we have identified and pinned them down earlier before even all these things happen. One of the key issues is about prevention of potential voters from registering through acts of intimidation and other violent methods. Possible attempt to obstruct and disrupt registration. Lack of cooperation among the interest groups. Then the likelihood of criminal elements vandalizing registration equipment. Then further, the possibility of unidentified person attacking registration officials, possible public disorder at registration centers, prevention of EC officials from performing their constitutional tax, among others. The last but not the least is the possible unlawful demonstrations. These were issues that our threat analysis and assessment team actually arrived at. But I think I don't need to say anything. The presentations that have been done earlier would confirm what the security agencies have done earlier.
we're just going to give you some extra of an after action review incidents. So for the this is for the voter registration. That is the discussion we are having now. Um, notwithstanding all what has been presented, the pictures and all that, we'll give you our position on whether it was a successful operation or it is not. But let's go to the, the hot cake now. The issue of Ashanti region, I think you know, it is open source information, you know about that. Bono region, Banda Hinkro, Unkran Kwanta, Doma West, you know about that. Central region, you know about Kaswa, you know about Ajumako. <coughs> and in all these cases, I think I don't need to say, it is not the National Election Security Task Force that is saying. But we all know that basically and mostly, it has been about clashes between political parties for one reason or the other. So therefore, going into the topic, we are have the thinking that it is really true that the politics of violence in Ghana is in one way or the other associated with vigilantism. And we would say why. So therefore, we are going to look at it briefly and go to some key issues. We must understand here that the maintenance of law and order, safety and security of Ghanaians and their property is the sole responsibility of the state. There is no argument about that. No any other organization, individual or group is authorized by the laws of this country to do that. Number two, the provision of safety and security are public goods that rest on the power and authority of the state to re-emphasize the first statement. Therefore, vigilantism or political vigilantism poses a threat to national security and integration. And we all need to take thinking about that. And this is why. This is not a statement that has been concocted by the police or the National Election Security Task Force. There is a law to that. And that law is Vigilantism and Related Offenses Act 2019, Act 999. It's clear. So what are the police actions? So an after action review. I've talked about the hotspots where we've got incidences as have been explained earlier, but others have not been explained and the, 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 the nature of the incidents may be different. Volta and OT, the key issue is resistance to deployment to the borders and others which you might know. Then you come to Bono region, I've talked about Banda he grew up, uh, and then in Crown Quanta, Doma area, central region we've cited that. Ashanti we've talked about that. And some of the issues that trigger this incident is about allegation and counter allegation of bursting of alleged and qualified persons to registration centers. I think we know about that. And then the police service within the framework of the National uh, Election Security Task Force, supported by the security, have done some investigations. And we'll go we'll give you some uh, extract of that. Then, notwithstanding all this, we must also look at it holistically. The fact that we have 16 regions in Ghana, and then we've got incidents here and there, and we'll expatiate on them, while some of them come in both areas, we will need to understand. Greater Accra region, from the data we have, has the largest population of voters now in the country. We can say, operationally, the exercise has been successful, notwithstanding issues of 
the sighted Hayawasu West were gone. It has been virtually, operationally, it has been successful, notwithstanding. Northern sector, according to our action, after action review, we go to Northern region, Northeast, Upper East, Upper West, Savannah region. So far, it has not been bad, relatively peaceful. There have been incidents, like what I've said, allegations of bashing and all that, but it did not get to the point that we say it was not a successful operation. Ashanti region, I've come back to that. Why? We had incidences in two places. Asukori Mampong. And Asukori Mampong, I'm told, is the, uh, is it what? Uh, Asawa series, and then Ejura. But this is somewhere from the beginning to the middle of the listen. So the operational strategy changed. And after that, we've maintained the posture. People have been able to go about their duties and registration. So we need to look at it from that angle. Then at the same time, we can even talk about um, the Western regions. Western region and Western North. Operationally successful. The only areas that I can talk similar to Bota region and OT region is Jomoro. Also, resistance against what? Deployments. So therefore, if we look at that, another area that will come to Ahafo has also been successful, notwithstanding what my colleague has shown about the issue of Collins Dauda and all that. It started at the beginning, onset. We did a preemptive deployment immediately to the area. And if you look at that area, Ahafo, Asutifi, and all those places in previous years, after that incident, the security agencies, particularly the police service and the Ghana Armed Forces, was able to stamp their feet, and then that's the end of it. But Doma areas, you know, security, this is Ghana. So many regions, personnel deployment, resources, logistics, but I can tell you that once that into, we have massive deployment there, as soon as such incidents happen, Doma areas and Banda are in growth. So we've learned our lessons. We've seen the gaps and the hospitals, and definitely we put them into our planning. But if we make the analysis, we can say that the voter registration exercise operationally has been successful from our point of view. And we'll use this one as mock and as what well, lessons led to enhance our strategy and planning for the main election as we move on. There are a lot of issues that are still under investigations. Some have gone to court, we've gone some convictions, some have been remanded, so I cannot go into details, but I want you to understand that there have been arrests and prosecutions. Investigations are ongoing. Western region. Western region have secured some convictions for uh, some electoral related offenses. And if you look at the listing, some of these offenses, um, the report have mentioned them in some way, but when it comes to investigation and prosecution, there are also terminologies. So you look at assault at registration center, forced declaration for voting, assault on registration officer, causing unlawful damage to EC biometric registration kits. All this in cut across. Then false declaration for office or voting. These are all those things. And I think you know some of the issues that you are talking about. Either it is murder or manslaughter or not, that's what I cannot say. But when it comes to some of the assault that you are seeing, and then this, we call something, I think the lawyers are here from this thing. Causing harm and all those things will justify all those areas. So in principle, there is some cases are under investigation, some have been prosecuted, some under investigation. If you look at the, my earlier slide, the issue in, in Crown Quanta, we have about 10 people in detention in Sunyani under investigation. The same thing when it comes to um, Bandar Hinkru, seven people arrested, granted police inquiry bail. 
it is ongoing and ongoing in that process. Now, the way forward. It's about, the way forward is not about the security agencies. We are here to work. The violence is not perpetrated by us. We are rapid response teams that is always countering the violence that is created by the people. And you know who are doing that. So, therefore, the answer has been actually provided. Currently, the main law, as I've been saying, is the vigilantism and related offenses law. That is the main law. And I can tell you that this law provides solution to the problems that we are facing. So it has punitive measures for vigilante groups. They are supporters and financiers, the vigilante groups and the individuals themselves, and all that. And what we want to say as a service, as a national election scripture for is that we shall, like all other laws, enforce this law. But in the enforcement of the law, it would be wrong for you to point fingers at the security agencies and the National Election Security Task Force. It's a whole spectrum of agencies that work together. We can arrest, we can investigate, we can process and forward. Some of the functions are done by somebody else. I will leave it there. At the same time, we need to know, also know that there are already laws also that have been have been in, this, in existence over the years. The Constitution has spelled out some of these issues, then Police Service Act, then of course, the main criminal code and other offenses Act 1960 has a lot of what, caveats that can address some of these issues. So in conclusion, my way forward will be some kind of suggestions. The Ghana Police Service maintains its position. That, and this position, I know that it is the position also of the National Election Security Task Force, that vigilantism is a threat to national security and integration. The threat of vigilantism must be counted with all the might of the state. The Ghana Police Service will work in accordance with these laws. First, the Vigilantism and Related Offensive Act 2019, Act 999, the Criminal Code and Other Offenses Act 1960, Act 29, the National Peace Council Roadmap and Code of Conduct. And I wish to stay here that uh, the Ghana Police Service and invariably the National Election Security Task Force participated effectively in all the processes and witnesses most of the uh, programs of the National Peace Council. And we are grateful for that. Then, the last but not the least, we shall also enforce all related laws, as we have talked about. But to be able to achieve this, I convey on behalf of the National Election Security Task Force, uh, the security agencies to are continuing planning for 2020 elections. There will be a robust posture for the 2020 elections. Various training programs are being conducted for the command level and also for operational and tactical levels. The idea is to build confidence of our personnel so that we can counter any threat that will undermine the 2020 election. So therefore, the 2020 elections, like we've said it, if you are not part of the security agencies that are deploying, that are mandated to deploy to provide security, don't dare. If you dare, the security agencies will crash you on that. But it's not about the security agencies and the National Election Security Task Force alone. It's about a holistic stakeholder approach to peaceful 2020 elections. So, therefore, all Ghanaians, the political parties, the perpetrators of the violence that you have presented here, then the, the National Peace Council, 
all stakeholders in the country as far as the peace and security of this country is concerned. They must contribute effectively for a peaceful 2020 election and should not leave all the burden and be complaining about it is the police, it is the national security, uh, national election security task force. It's for all of us. We must work together to ensure that we get a successful and peaceful 2020 election. Thank you very much.